long distance relationship from A to Z. Hi guys, my name is Lena Semenek and this is my YouTube channel Psychology of Happiness. Welcome. Today we are talking about long distance relationship. Three years ago, I recorded two videos. The first one called uh, Six Stages of Long Distance Relationship and the second uh, video called uh, Seven Tips to Make Long Distance Relationship Work. Three years later, these videos are still popular and I keep getting um, comments and emails about long distance relationships. So today I picked top questions and I would like to review this video again. We're going to talk about stages. We're going to talk about what to do, how to make your relationship work. We're going to talk about people who more likely end up in a long distance relationship and why. So that's why I call this video long distance relationship from A to Z. Uh, what to expect, how to react, what to do. Let's start. Are there certain people who are more likely to be drawn to long distance relationship? Yes, uh, there are people uh, who are more likely to um, have long distance relationship versus physical relationships. Usually, uh, people who had an emotionally unavailable parent or both parents are more often to end up in long-distance relationship. Maybe uh, your parent was absent, maybe your parent was working a lot, or maybe your parent was sick for a long time and uh, your parent was not uh, physically and emotionally available to you. Alcoholic parents also fall into this category of emotionally unavailable parent because when a parent is drinking, he is not available to you. He or she cannot talk about your day. He or she cannot relate to your problems. They are occupied in their addiction world. So if a child was raised by a parent who did not provide enough love, care and support, the child has learned that you need to earn your love. You need to earn other person attention and uh, subconsciously this child believes that love equals struggle. So pain and um, loneliness that comes with long distance relationship is something the child is uh, expected in a way. Uh, so um, love becomes more passionate and more loving when uh, we have challenges. If you're not going through pain, if you're not going through struggles, if you don't overcome anything, then it's not a true love. So the person falls in love with somebody who reminds them subconsciously their parent. That's why this type of love is more alluring and more welcoming for that person because person already knows uh, what to expect. The emotions are similar to the one that person had in his or her childhood. So the person is familiar with this type of relationship. That's why uh, the person is more likely to fall into this type of relationship. Let's move on to the next question. Is it true that a challenging relationship more appealing? Yes, but not for everyone. People who were raised in a healthy family knows that love brings joy and happiness. Those uh, of us who did not end up um, in a good, happy childhood usually fall uh, into this fake love, which is called virtual relationship. Often people call a long distance relationship when they don't even see a person uh, in real life. They uh, created their life online and they created their love story online. They did not see each other in person, but they can be in relationship for months and even for years. Of course, there are some exceptions. Of course, there are people who have been together for some time and they maybe they live together, but then one partner received an opportunity and uh, they have to move to a different city or a different country. This is what I personally call long distance relationship. So another person moves to another state because it was mutual decision when they were in the relationship. And usually in this case, uh, they already know what to expect. They already know that at some time, maybe in six months, maybe a year, uh, another person will move 
in uh, with the first one or the, the first one will uh, come back and they're gonna continue living where they used mm -hmm. to live before their relationship started. So healthy couples know how to overcome this long distance relationship. Healthy couples usually have a specific amount of time or at least they know approximately how long will it take. When uh, a couple um, has to go through a uh, long distance relationship, uh, they made this decision together. So today we're going to talk about both people and I will try to show you the difference between healthy long distance relationship and unhealthy long distance relationship. So people who were raised by emotionally unavailable people will more likely to fall into unhealthy long distance relationship and spend uh, months and even years often without even seeing a person and meeting the person online. There are real stories when people uh, meet online, have a long distance relationship for several months and then they get together and get married. Are they just lucky? Yes, they are. Uh, every rule has an exception and um, um, statistically most long distance relationship, they um, do not last. But sometimes, yes, some, uh, there are some people who can uh, be in a long distance relationship without knowing each other, without seeing each other uh, in the real life. But then they meet and uh, they live for many years, get married, have kids, and they're pretty happy. The problem in this uh, exception that every couple thinks that this is story, this story is about them. Every couple believe, and usually not the couple, uh, let me correct myself, usually one person uh, in this couple believes that uh, they will meet, they will have kids, they will marry and they will live happily ever after. Uh, remember, this is an exception. In most couples, we will talk a little bit more about stages and reasons why, but most couples fail and, uh, and they face a, even bigger pain at the end of the relationship. Uh, so many couples start re sending me messages uh, by email, searching on YouTube uh, uh, advice for long distance relationship when they feel that something is not going uh, as they expected. When the other person on the phone does not reply to, re to their text messages or maybe um, they reply but not uh, right away. Or when they call a partner and they hear that uh, a partner is not really excited talking to them on the phone or maybe the partner is not turning on his video camera then uh, people start searching on YouTube and uh, trying to find the reasons but usually at this moment it's already very very hard to save the relationship. So uh, another question that I receive often which is kind of following the previous one what can I do to uh, make my relationship last? What can I do to switch from virtual relationship into real relationship? When my partner avoids a conversation about uh, meeting or when my partner creates lots of reasons and excuses to kind of um, push away our meeting date in person. Unfortunately, you are not gonna like my answer. To be honest with you, I do not consider virtual relationship as a relationship. You can call it online dating, you can call it uh, virtual love, but this is not a relationship. The relationship starts when you meet a person face to face. If you have never seen your partner uh, in real life uh, talking to him or her, seeing her, like hugging her, touching her, even, you know, like having a cup of coffee, you know, um, together, then you are not in a relationship. The reason for that is that uh, when you're talking to a person um, via text messages, on the phone, even via a um, webcam, you still don't know the person. Uh, like, for example, you see me, you know, on my video camera, you don't know what's behind this door. You don't know what's behind that door. You only see my room and you only see what I decided to show you. And um, it's completely different. So you don't really know me. You know just the image that you see through your screen. Uh, same in a relationship, in a virtual relationship. When you see the person only through the screen, 
you create an image in your head about this person you create some expectations and uh, unfortunately when you meet in person you might realize that this is a different person he or she is not what uh, you expect them to be uh, he or she are not uh, as they presented themselves so that's why it's very hard to be in long distance relationship for months because the, the longer we are in a relationship the bigger illusion we create uh, maybe it's hard for you right now to hear this maybe you're angry at me and disagree at me please let me in the comments uh, what do you think uh, and uh, how is it in your couple do you believe that you really know your person uh, after talking uh, to them uh, for three four months uh, via screen or do you think that there is some part of them that you still don't know and you might be disappointed at the end when you're gonna realize that the person is not the same as you expect them to be so in order to answer your question how can you make this relationship real or how can you um, transform your virtual relationship into real relationship when your partner is trying to avoid the conversation about the meeting date unfortunately there is no uh, answer as to say that maybe it's time to say goodbye to your partner if they don't want to meet in real in real life if they are creating excuse after excuse and you feel lonely if they don't pick up the phone uh, every time when you call them if they don't reply to your messages or if they are trying to shorten the conversation then just be honest with yourself how much pain are you willing to go through how much um, suffering are you willing to to take uh, in order to save this relationship if the other person does not want to speed up and to meet in real life if the other person has you know several reasons which i call excuses uh, if he or she is not willing to overcome these challenges then maybe it's time for you to be honest with your partner and to tell your partner that if we do not come up with the day when we're gonna meet and it should be you know somewhere in the nearest future within a month or two it cannot be you know next year and if the other person is not willing to commit then maybe it's time to say goodbye maybe it's time to give yourself an opportunity to find somebody else uh, who can make you happy and with whom you can create a healthy relationship so let's talk about six stages of a long distance relationship i will give you the approximate duration of each stage uh, but uh, this cannot be short some people ask me uh, can it be just one or two days can we go through these six stages within a week the answer is no uh, it's not a video game it's not a tv show when you can rewind you know for the next episode usually each state lasts at least two in a half three weeks so uh like six stages if you multiply by three it should be you know 18 weeks 18 weeks divided by four so it's about four to five months right so it cannot be within one week uh, if you in a virtual relationship these stages will also apply to you but there will be some corrections and when i say virtual i mean that if you've never seen your partner then uh, please listen to the stages and i will make some corrections that will apply to you specifically so let's talk about stages the first stage is we can do it stage this stage usually lasts about three to four weeks both partners um, feel in love both partners understand that this is a temporary situation and they know that there is a specific amount of time when they will be separate but will they will still you know get in touch they will still see each other time to time so the main idea of this stage that both partners have similar expectations and both partners are willing to commit and they kind of know and understand what it takes to be on a distance to be in a relationship on a distance 
in about three to four weeks, uh, usually couple, uh, you know, goes slowly into second stage. And the second stage is first doubts. Mutual feelings are not as strong as they were before, but there are still some energy, sexual energy in the air. Uh, a partner might not reply to you as fast as before. A partner might not return your calls. The phone conversation might get shorter and um, time to time your partner might refuse to turn uh, their video for, for one reason or another. And at this stage, you might feel kind of strange, a little bit suspicious, and your friends will tell you, you know, you deserve somebody better. Uh, you know, you should look around, you should have fun, uh, give yourself an opportunity to meet new people. So your friends will start pushing you on the edge, or maybe your family members. But you still believe in your couple. Deep inside, you still believe in your couple and you still believe in your love. So you will, you know, find a good explanation for this stage. And it is, it is, there is a real actual explanation. You are to get, not together. You are on the different sides of the world or in different cities. You might live in a different time zone. So there are some good reasons why, you know, your partner might be busy. So at this stage, you will have some doubts, but you will easily overcome them and you will still believe in your relationship. Stage number three is a stage of loneliness and emptiness. And this stage can last a few weeks or a couple of months. Uh, on this stage, you feel sad, you feel disappointed, you feel lonely. You might be angry at the situation. You might uh, be angry uh, at your partner. You might be angry at yourself. You might blame yourself that you did something wrong. You might blame yourself for not saying something last time when you talk to your partner. Uh, so in general, you feel kind of terrible at this stage. You can't really share your feelings with your family members and with your friends because they already told you on the previous stage that, you know, maybe you should look, um, you know, into some other guys or some other girls. Uh, they already told you that this is not going to work. So you can't really go to them because if you do, you're going to face even bigger pain, even bigger, bigger, bigger struggles. So on this stage, you are alone and um, you might start eating more. You might start drinking more. This is a very, very hard stage and um, people are suffering on this stage. Usually people are on this stage uh, researching YouTube and sending me messages saying like, please help, my partner does not reply to me, I feel suspicious, he said this, but he did this, uh, what can I do? Uh, I receive lots of uh, emails and comments on my other YouTube videos about long distance relationship when people are saying like, what should I do, please help, please advise. Unfortunately, this is the stage that you should go through. Uh, and so let's move on and I will show you what will be after this stage. So at some point, this stage will end. For couples who are in a virtual relationship, who did not see each other in real life, usually on this stage, stage number three, they break up. But couples who uh, used to be in a real relationship, physical relationship before, have a better chance to overcome this um, stage number three of loneliness and emptiness. So, and then, you know, out of the blue, you switch to stage number four, which is reconnection stage. So after all these mixed feelings, uh, you got into this decision that yes, you know, I know what to do. I just have to go and see my partner. I don't care about anything. If you, if you don't have money, you're going to borrow it from your friend. If you have money in your bank account, you will withdraw all the money and you will do the impossible thing possible. You will um, ignore your friends and family. You will just go and meet your partner. And if your partner feelings are as strong as yours, then it's going to be like your honeymoon. Uh, you will spend a wonderful day or two together, maybe a week together. Your feelings uh, will come back. You will have lots of um, intimacy. Love and passion will be, you know, in the air. So at this stage, 
that's why it's called reconnecting stage you feel great you feel excited and for couples that did not see each other before it might be their first time when they see each other if your expectation if the image that you created about the person will be similar or close to the per to the real person and if there your partner's uh, image will also be similar about you as you are in the reality so let me say again you create an image in your head about the other person and the other person created an image about you who you are what you like what you don't like so if your images that you created are similar to the reality then you might have this uh, excitement happy loving meeting for the first time when you're gonna immerse in each other and you're gonna fall in love but if that if this does not happen if uh, the other person of if you have a different image then it will be a stage of disappointment and this might happen even with a couple who were in a relationship in a physical relationship before they decided to go into long distance relationship uh, we are changing every day every day we're becoming slightly different from what we were yesterday so the longer you were apart the bigger gap between you uh, you might face uh, and you might feel that yes i see my partner um, he or she looks the same uh, i know this person but something is wrong something is missing this person is standing in front of me but I feel this gap, I feel this emptiness between us. So some couples will go through this, their honeymoon on this stage and some couples will go through a painful realization that this relationship are not gonna work. And unfortunately they will say goodbye to each other and uh, say, you know, maybe wish the best for each other, hopefully. And they will have to deal with their pain and with their feelings of disappointment. And of course, they will have to face that uh, time is gone. And some people can spend years. I know a woman who spent 10 years waiting for her partner to, to come back to her. They've been, they start uh, dating online and they've been very close they send uh, lots of messages video chat for the first year but then you know slowly and slowly uh, her guy was replying less and less so she spent 10 years hoping that one day you know they will be together unfortunately this did not happen and um, she had to face uh, that the fact that she have lost 10 years in her life and uh, she lost her beauty she lost her youth and now she's alone so let's move to the stage number five let's assume that your couple were able to reconnect and this was a pleasant and wonderful stage stage for you uh, and then you're gonna at some point you're gonna have to go back to your place or your partner will have to go back to his town and you are on a long distance relationship again. So stage number five is lack of trust. And this is a very similar stage to stage number two when you had your first doubts. The difference between this stage and the first doubt stage that on stage number two, it were mostly your friends and maybe your family members who were telling you, you know, maybe this relationship will not work. Maybe you should look for somebody else. So on this stage, you have these suspicious feelings inside. You don't need your friends or your family member to tell you to look around and to think that maybe there is somebody else who can make you feel great and happy. So you feel lonely again, you feel empty, you feel angry, you feel hopeless. And there are like a mix of feelings and you will realize that questions come into your head like this, like, is he or she really the one? Am I wasting my time? Is he or she lying to me? Do I really love this person? Do I really want to be with this person? So you start noticing that you have some 
you know, mixed feelings inside. And then you will notice that there are other people are flirting with you and you will start considering maybe, maybe we're not supposed to be together. Maybe it's too hard. And then finally, stage number six is stage of cheating and breakup or stage of fully commitment. At this stage, all couples who sur survive through the five previous stages will have to face the reality. Either one of the partners will cheat and it's going to be a breakup, painful breakup for another person, or a couple will decide that, okay, we need to plan when we're going to meet together and we need to plan when we're going to be permanently together. So a couple will take serious changes. So if the couple was, you know, taken apart because of the job offer, they will figure out what to do next. One partner should move in with another or another one should come back or maybe they're going to move in somewhere together, you know, in the third location. So a couple will make their plans and it's going to be specific plans. Uh, it will not be next year. They will know at least the months when they will get back together. So, and this is the final stage, uh, which uh, for lucky couples, it will end up in a happy relationship, happy marriage, possibly happy family. And for some couples, for most, I would say couples, unfortunately, it will be the breakup stage and uh, the stage when you have to deal with the painful feelings inside of you. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Why couples drift apart during stage two and three of a long distance relationship? The simple reason why most couples cannot overcome this challenge in time because they are on a distance. The distance and time. Uh, in order for you to be in a relationship, you need to touch a person, you need to kiss a person, you need to share your meal with a person, you need to go for a walk together, spend time together. You cannot do all these things. And the longer you are apart, the harder it is to save your relationship. As I said before, we are changing every day, little by little. When you live in different cities, in different states, in different countries, we are changing even more. A great example can be a school reunion. Uh, when you go to a school reunion, you might realize that the person that you known for years can be completely different. The shy girl is no longer shy. The selfish guy can be gentle and nice. Uh, the person who had bad grades might be successful. So life will change us. And when we live in a different cities, in a different countries, in a different cultures, we have different friends who influence us. Of course, we are going to change. So that's why I'm saying that it's not about the person that the person is bad. Or it's not about that the person could not commit. It's about the time and the difference, physical difference that, you know, pushes us apart or even further and further, you know, every day, every month, every year. People often ask me what can they do to help themselves and their partner to go through the stage number two when they have first doubts. Uh, the best and the easiest solution is to go and see your partner. Try to, you know, overcome all the challenges and, you know, you, you are the person who actually can go through challenges. Challenges is something that attracts you, right? So try to find the way to see your partner. Uh, make as, if, if there's no way that you're going to see each other, make as many phone calls as you can and make them video calls. Uh, of course, don't call your partner 24-7, but try to be present in each other's life as much as possible. Ask your partner about uh, their day. Uh, to ask them to tell you uh, about their work. Even if you don't like or if you don't understand anything about your partner's work, uh, maybe it's some you know area that you are not even um, know anything, it's okay. Just ask your partner to tell you more about his or her work. Try to be part of each other's life. But again, the best advice is to go and to see your partner as soon as possible. That will be the best uh, pill, the best advice that you can get in a long distance relationship. 
Next question. What are some practical things you can do to create more intimacy and connection with your partner despite the distance? Nothing can be compared to real intimacy. Virtual sex can be fun and it can actually spice up a relationship a bit at the beginning, but uh, within time, it's not going to satisfy you or your partner. Because in order for you to be with a partner, you need to feel your partner. You need to see your partner. You need to smell your partner. This is what we call intimacy. It's not just, you know, talking and showing pictures on the phone. Intimacy creates a connection. And nothing can be compared to real physical intimacy. So if you would like to spark your relationship, if you would like to spark your passion, then yes, try to send each other, you know, maybe some flirting images, uh, try to talk and flirt on the phone. But remember, time is your enemy and nothing can beat the time. So we all have heard stories about happy marriages after long distance relationship. But remember that usually these stories are exception. That's why you need to be with your partner. It's not the same. If you cannot sit on the same couch and watch the movie, if you cannot drink coffee together, if you cannot laugh together, you know, when you're walking in, in just around the neighborhood, if you cannot go together with your friends, then it will be very, very hard for you to keep this connection between you. The difference between friendship and relationship is that friends don't need to touch each other. You can be friends with somebody for years without seeing a person. You just need to call each other. You need to, you know, be emotionally involved in each other's life, but physically you don't need to be next to each other with your friend. So if you don't want your relationship to switch from a romantic relationship to friend to friendship, you need to see each other. What should people consider before even getting into long distance relationship? This is an excellent question and I love this question. Thank you very much to the author of this question. So the first and the most important thing to consider is to get an estimate of how long it will take. You need to have an idea. So you and your partner knows how long will it take. Even if you meet online, even if you are chatting with a person and you never seen this person in your real life. So you can send uh, to the person something like this. Hey, I really enjoyed our conversation uh, for the last two weeks. Uh, uh, I know that in order for this relationship to work, we should come up with a plan how we can see each other. Uh, unfortunately, if uh, you are not interested in seeing me in a real life, sadly, but I will have to end up this relationship. I don't want to be pushy, but this is very important for me. I want to be in a relationship with the real person. I want to see the person, to smell the person, to touch the person. I want to be intimate with the person. I know that maybe it's too soon to talk about it, but let's get at least some plan or some idea when do you think we can see each other in real life? So something similar, but get, get an idea in your partner's mind that if he or she is not willing to commit, then this relationship will not work. Give yourself time. You need to know if your partner does not reply to you, if your partner does not come up with a, a date or with an idea how or when you're going to see, at least come up with that decision yourself. Tell yourself, okay, I am. I like this guy. For example, I like this guy. I would like to continue talking to him, but it's not going to be longer than three months. If within the next three months, we will not see each other, we will not make a specific plan to see each other, then, you know, in three months, I will have to say goodbye. So you need to come up uh, with a number that will work for you. And three months uh, is a good number for people who've met virtually, who did not see each other online. So if you've seen each other in real life, if you've been in a physical relationship, then for you it can be longer. So three months is only kind of a rule of thumb for people who've met online. So let's talk about what can you do to make your long distance relationship work. 
And this is one of the top questions that I receive. And today I would like to share seven tips with you that will make your long distance relationship work. So tip number one is to send your partner two, three pictures every day. Again, because you cannot spend time together in real life, you need to create a virtual life that will be as close to your real life as possible. You need to involve, include your partner in your life and you need to be included in their life. So by sending pictures, <clears throat> you create a story through these pictures of your life and <clears throat> your partner can experience it together with you. Number two, make an arrangement to call each other on the same time every day. For example, maybe you can agree to call each other in the morning or maybe you will talk uh, with each other during your lunch break. Uh, you don't need to have like two or three hours conversation, maybe just 20 minutes, but every day at the same time. So this will help you to create this uh, expectation that, oh, I'm going to hear my husband or oh, I'm going to talk to him on the phone or oh, I will see her like tonight in a few hours. So this routine will help you to be in each other's life and to support each other. Uh, also, this calling routine is going to be your little tradition that you can remember later for many, many years. Uh, at some point, your long distance relationship will end and uh, many years later, you might see uh, you might sit next to your husband or next to your wife on the christmas eve and say hey remember the time when we called each other every day yeah it was only 20 minutes and for me it was the night time but for you it was your lunch break and we chat for 20 minutes and we laughed together we planned our life uh, ahead of us it was a wonderful time so this tip will help you to create a great foundation for your future life together. Tip number three is to send gifts to your partner. And uh, people often ask me, should they send an expensive gift? Should it be a big gift? How often to send it? That's actually up to you how often you want to send it. Uh, but I don't recommend to send big gifts or expensive gifts unless it's your husband or it's your per partner's birthday or some special event. Here I am uh, talking about small gifts that can bring a small piece of you to your partner's life. For example, if you are a girl, you can spray uh, like you know your small gift with your perfume, so partner can you know get a sense of your smell. Uh, the idea of this gift that uh, something that you hold in your hand, a uh, partner can touch in his hand. And this also can create a connection, special connection between you. Uh, maybe it's going to be some photo collage from your images. Maybe it will be some, some funny t-shirt with the town where you live. So something small, but something that uh, will create a pleasant experience. Maybe it will be just a coffee mug. When you pour hot water, it showed your face and saying like, I have a good day or good morning or something like that. So the, the idea of this gift is to create an emotional connection between you and your partner. Tip number four is to flirt with your partner. Mm. Yes, it might be challenging to flirt on the phone, but create an inside jokes. Create some maybe sexy jokes that only you and your partner understands. Maybe create some, uh, some um, funny stories or some funny pictures that will not bring only humor, but it will be a little bit sexual. So this sexual energy will help you go through this challenging uh, stages when you feel lonely and empty. Uh, you know, read some jokes, uh, intimate jokes online and maybe send your partner some jokes. You know your partner best, so you know what uh, they like. Think about them and create uh, some uh, passionate uh, flirting energy every time when you talk to your partner. Tip number five is to find yourself a hobby. Uh, 
something that you can enjoy when you're gonna go through this uh, terrible stage number two and number five the stage of loneliness the stage of anger the stage of doubts when your friends your family members will say that this is not gonna work in order for you to believe in your relationship you need to have something that you can enjoy besides your partner uh, a hobby that you can do uh, for hours uh, uh, maybe it will be some yoga or maybe you're gonna read some book or maybe it's gonna be something else so find yourself a hobby that can you know help you to survive through these difficult stages tip number six is to plan your visit and I'm not talking about the visit that when you gonna reconnect forever. No, I'm talking about short visits when you can see each other. If you can see each other every other weekend, good. If you can see each other every month, great. Uh, if you can see each other every two months, also good. But try not to make it longer than three months. Uh, every time when you plan to see your, hus uh, your husband, when you plan to see your partner, Try to make the visit interesting so it's not just two of you together. Create some experience, something new, something that, again, something that will create lots of happy memories after you're going to go back to your city. So plan your visits. Think about what can two of you do together. If you are going to see your partner, partner during the weekend, think about how can you make this fun how can you enjoy this besides like you know kissing and having sex for 24 hours what else can you do of course the sexual energy will be you know your primary number one thing when you see your partner but think about what else can you do when you're gonna see your partner so make it special and tip number seven is create your plans for the future after you gonna be together permanently so uh, thinking about the future will bring your uh, day will bring the date when your relationship long distance relationship will end sooner and faster so think about maybe your future vacation think about uh, maybe the place where you're gonna live together you can say okay so you know when we're gonna get back together in six months do you want us to rent a bigger place do you want what what type of furniture do you like do you want to decorate it in a light color and a dark color what uh, do you want like you know pictures on the wall so do you prefer painting so talk with your partner and again when you're gonna create this vision of your future it will be easier for you to solve this distance uh, problem and to figure out how can you be together uh, regardless the difficulties that you have please let me know in the comments which tip do you think will work for your couple the best or what other uh, maybe tips you can share with people who are in a long distance relationship tell me what works for you and maybe i missed some tips maybe you have some great ideas and if you can share i will be super helpful and super grateful for you for doing this and the last question for today's uh, long distance relationship a to z video is what can we learn from long distance relationship about love and relationship in general what can you learn and yes, relationship is uh, long distance relationship can be very, very challenging. And uh, um, relationship in general can be complex. And uh, I have multiple videos on YouTube talking about conflicts, talking about connection, about uh, intimacy. So what we can learn from long distance relationship is that we have to be open with each other and we have to be honest with, with each other. We cannot read each other's mind. And at some point, uh, even in a real relationship, in a physical relationship, we will have some misunderstandings. We will have some different desires. And this is normal. Do not expect uh, that you should... Uh, uh, agree with your partner all the time do not expect that your partner will agree with you all the time our differences are great actually things uh, 
to talk about because maybe your partner will bring something new into your life and you can bring something new into his life so so uh, the advice is be open and don't be afraid to show your partner who you are don't be afraid to be vulnerable because emotional connection is what can help you to go through this long distance relationship if you see your partner is in a bad mood ask uh, your partner what's wrong if your partner does not want to tell you what's wrong give your partner a space let him or her to go through this and maybe you know later you can talk about it if you see that your partner is in a great mood help them to celebrate their victories help them to celebrate their achievements share their joy and happiness together create traditions uh between between you create inside jokes this question this will help any relationship just you know when you're gonna meet it, each other in a real life you will need your traditions you will need to have your daily routine and you know if you have this mm, habit calling each other every day for 20 minutes you still can continue doing it even if you live in the same apartment you can call your husband you know during break time your husband sorry you can call your partner during break time lunch break you know every day and this is going to be your 20 minutes of connection so if you are in a long distance relationship i want to wish your couple the best i want to wish you your couple to be able to go through this uh challenging time and i wish you have everything that you need to go through this and um, if you are going through some tough time uh i know that it can be painful please share your story below the video and let other people to support you because people who are watching this video are people who are in a long distance relationship otherwise they would not be interested in this topic so let other people to support you let's share please share your story below the video in the comments share your tips share your questions share your concerns love is not about pain love is about joy and happiness and we can share this joy and happiness with each other we can share it with our partners we can help each other to go through this long and difficult stage in our life so let me know in the comments what part of the video was helpful to you which part of this video you enjoyed the most what did you learn into this video what tips uh, you can apply and uh, share this video with your partner uh, let your partner to see this video and hopefully this video will help your couple to meet sooner and to enjoy time together let me know what is your biggest challenge let's continue this conversation in the comments below and if this video was helpful please give me like subscribe and share i will see you in the next video bye